Good afternoon, everyone. The keynote speaker of this session is Iqbal Abdullah, and the topic is Changing the World, One Python at a Time, version 2022. Iqbal is a Malaysian who has been a resident of Japan for the past 20 years. He is the founder and CEO of the local labs. His previous company, Zoxo, was acquired in September 2021, which he still currently serves as the COO. Iqbal will be speaking about the past, present, and his hopes for the future of the community from a people mover and organizer point of view. There will be nostalgic pictures, thought on diversity, inclusion, generational change, burnout, and hopefully opportunities to reflect during this talk. So let's welcome Iqbal. Uh, thank you, everyone. I hope uh, you all had the best of health. May peace be upon you wherever you are. Um, before I start, I would also like to introduce to my pet, Nick. I found her in Ikea, uh, and she's a python, so we call her Paikia. Hi, everyone. I hope you're all fine today. Welcome to the keynote talk. Well, that was Paikia speaking. Anyway, um, before we go into my keynote in more detail, I believe it would be helpful to give more context to you. Uh, by giving a short introduction about myself and where I'm coming from. So, who am I? Um, my name is Iqbal Abdullah. Um, I'm a Malaysian and a resident of Japan. So, I've been using Python since uh, 2002, and in many ways, it has given me the intellectual challenge that I've created allowed me uh, the freedom to bring my imagination to life and through PyCon has allowed me to meet wonderful people that have shaped my career and also to the current person that I am. Uh, I'm a managing member of the Python Software Foundation and have been involved in the community and PyCon around the APEC region uh, since 2010. I helped found PyCon JP in 2011 and PyCon MY in 2014. Currently, I'm also a member of the Trade World Trademarks Work Group and the Diversity and Inclusion, also known as the DNI Work Group of the PSF. So, uh, in, in my day job, I'm currently the CEO of uh, La Loca Labs, where we have uh, three main products uh, called GetPP, Kafka, and La Loca Layouts. Through our products, our aim is simple help our customers save time, uh, money, and become happy human beings. So in order for me to call my keynote today as, as part of my work, allow me to quickly just introduce you to these three products of ours. So if you're building something on the web, these are the two things which we have built that might be interest of you. To the left is GetOTP, a simple web API service to package uh, the mundane task of creating and verifying one-time passwords for your website or apps. While to the right is collection of libraries, which I believe will be useful to you if you're using uh, Tailwind CSS uh, called Lanoka Labs for Tailwind. A get UTP comes with an API that simplifies the generation, sending, and verification of one time passwords. It also includes a user interface for your end customers to easily verify uh, the OTPs that they receive. Um, while Laduka Layout is not a product per se, uh, but a collection of widgets which we put up online for anyone to use, uh, it definitely helped us when our developers wanted to design websites and we hope it will help you too. Our third product is called uh, La Loca Labs. Uh, sorry, our third product is called Kafka, uh, which is an AI content generation. It automatically generates and quickly gen it automatically and quickly generates text which have been used for content on blog posts or social media. So it's mostly used by marketers to quickly and automatically produce content for SEO purposes. I also use it when I need more content uh, for my post, and also sometimes when I write something about Python or PyCon. So I'm happy to report that we use a lot of Python in our products. Other than using Python, we make it a point to give back by engaging and being present in the community, such as giving talks, doing free workshops, and sponsoring conferences. In the other company, which I also helped uh, to manage called Zoxo, we also donate a portion of our profits to the PSF and Python related projects. We did this through what we call our annual open source grants program. Uh, I think we donated around $1,500 to $2,000 to 
per year to the KSF and various open source projects that we use. And we publish this on our blog to give exposure to these projects with the hope other people will also know about them and follow our lead. Well, um, let's go on with our uh, talk today. So this will be a talk basically based on the blog which I wrote in June 2017, titled Changing the World, One PyCon at a Time. That blog post was meant to be lead material before the PyCon APEC 2017 team was interviewed for a local radio station in Kuala Lumpur. When I was invited to give the keynote for PyCon APEC 2022 by the PyCon TW team, the expectation was that I would talk about topics that concern PyCon in APEC and the community surrounding it. I found the general team that the blog post that I had written at that time was still relevant, so I decided to update the version for PyCon APEC 2022. So I'm pleased today to present my keynote uh, for PyCon APEC 2022 titled Changing the World One PyCon at a Time, version 2022. Uh, the script is also online. So I, I come from a family of writers and throughout my personal and professional journey, I've discovered that other than building things, I also enjoy and perhaps produce my best work through writing long form. So please feel free to follow me through the script, which I uploaded online uh, yesterday before the bonus talk. You can access it through from the QRR code, which I pasted here. And just leave it there for a few seconds, if any of you are interested in scanning that. Okay. So, my first PyCon. Um, there you go. Okay, so my first PyCon, how it was. And in the spirit of inclusion, I will not assume that everyone listening in today knows what PyCon is, although uh, you are attending a PyCon. So I will briefly just introduce you to, to what is PyCon. A PyCon, in essence, is a conference centered around the Python programming language. It really started with the first PyCon in Washington, D.C., in the United States in 2003, and then expanded to many parts of the world, uh, from Asia to Europe. Uh, within this region of ours, uh, Japan, South Korea, China, Hong Kong, Taiwan, Singapore, Philippines, Indonesia, Malaysia, Thailand, and within our own neighboring regions, uh, India, Bangladesh, Pakistan, Australia, and New Zealand have had their own country by cons. Once a year, one country within our region will host the regional PyCon APEC, which we have had since 2010. So uh, this is a map of all the PyCon APECs which we've already had since 2010. So 2010, it started out in uh, Singapore. Singapore had it for three years in a row, 2010, 2011, 2012. And then it moved on to uh, Japan, 2013, Tokyo. Uh, 2014, Taiwan, uh, Taipei hosted it. Uh, for two consecutive years, 2014 and 2015. Next, we went to South Korea and Seoul, uh, Seoul in South Korea, sorry. And then it moves on to uh, Malaysia, Kuala Lumpur, which uh, I had the pleasure of being the chair person. And uh, after 2017, it moves back to Singapore. And then it moves to Manila and the Philippines, 2020, which is a year which I, I, I believe many of us will remember for many, many years to come, uh, it was hosted by uh, the Malaysian team in Kuala Lumpur, but because of the pandemic, it went up online. And in 2020, 2021, uh, Bangkok uh, took, uh, took it up uh, for, for APEC, and this year we have it uh, back in Taipei. So uh, you can see here Taipei, Singapore, and Kuala Lumpur uh, had PyCon APEC more than once uh, within the past uh, year since 2010. So although it's a long list, I've personally named each individual countries which have joined us uh, within this larger PyCon APEC umbrella for two reasons. Number one is to acknowledge them. And then number two, to underscore the diversity of the people, cultural languages, and the background that we have among us. I'll come back to this very important topic later on uh, during my talk. 
the first PyCon impact was held in 2010 in Singapore. It was the idea of uh, Dr. Liu Ben Kiat and his committee, which later on became the Python user group of Singapore. Uh, by chance, I saw the PyCon impact flyer at the time on the internet and decided to participate. My initial intentions was just to go to the conference, understand how Python was being used, maybe learn a few things, leave, and that was it. I didn't know it then, but in insight, that was a very fateful decision that has now followed me towards one of the most fulfilling experiences in my life. I believe that there are also some of you today or in the past that came to PyCon expecting something similar, like myself uh, in 2010, but ended up staying. We should have a support group, you know, like PyCon Anonymous. But I guess that's what uh, we have PyCons are for. This is a picture of me with uh, Benkia and Ivan uh, during PyCon in 2017 in Kuala Lumpur. So when I was in Singapore during the first PyCon impact, I met up with Benkia, who is coincidentally also Malaysian. We had that in common, so we started to talk, and I found out his motivations and reason on, of trying to start PyCon impact. In essence, it was because of basically three things. Number one, Singapore was too small. Number two, making it affordable. And the third one is make it accessible. The first reason was a practical one. Uh, Singapore's community was, was too small. Having a local PyCon uh, Singapore conference doesn't make sense because that will mean only the same folks coming. So they leapfrog that problem by just having a regional conference from the start. A regional conference will also have a greater name, brand value. And if you are, especially around Southeast Asia, you will know how notorious Singaporeans, people living in Singapore is about being about the ideas in marketing. Well, this will help them uh, to attract big name keynote speakers who happen to be concentrated in the United States and Europe. The reasoning was that international speakers are more willing to take an 18 hour flight across continents to attend a regional conference where they can expect to meet as many people as possible instead of a single country conference. Now, the second and third reasons, although sounding direct and simple, serves a well-defined and profound purpose. We understand that nearly all of the advances made in technology by the programming language, new concepts and philosophies in thinking about the language and even how communities are organized towards a greater good for everyone at large, originate mostly in the United States and Europe. Unfortunately, the monetary and time costs for our community members in this part of the world to travel to the US or Europe is too prohibitive and is a huge constraint. If you cannot be in the United States to meet and listen to the great minds that shape the programming language, its community and its future, let's have them here instead. Having a PyCon which is nearer uh, to its intended audience will make it accessible and also affordable. In insight, I, I think this was the first word work towards a more inclusive community for our region, even before we had diversity and inclusion as keywords like we have had right now. Here are some of the keynote speakers that we've had since 2010 for our PyCon APAC. I have to apologize because I'm pretty sure I've missed to include some of our keynote, spe uh, keynote speakers here because I wanted to keep this to a single slide. But what I would like to impress to uh, you, my audience today, is to the quality, the diversity, and the support that we have had from the great minds of our community. It was a wonderful thing. Uh, it was a wonderful thing to have the opportunity to get all our keynotes to come to us and share with us their thoughts and knowledge. I'm sure that some of you will at least recognize one of two uh, of our keynotes here that were listed. I've listed out on. Uh, on the slide. So I call these two reasons, uh, making it affordable and making it accessible as the main ingredients for our PyCons in this region. Uh, for more deeper history lessons on the history of PyCon APAC and the past PyCons up until 2019, I suggest that you watch uh, Benkiat's excellent keynote for PyCon 2019 in Makati.
he has a link uh, to the video on YouTube. All right, so 12 years after our first PyCon, or how's it going? Brett Cannon first said that during PyCon 2014, I think, and I think he's quoted up hundreds, thousands of times, maybe. Uh, and true enough, he said, uh, come for the language and stay for the community. And, and true enough, I, I came for the language in 2010 and, and stayed on for the community. So this is a picture of uh, us having an APEC community meeting in 2017 uh, during the PyCon APEC in Seoul. Uh, if you recognize, uh, that's Ewa, uh, the third from the left. Uh, she was uh, the executive director of uh, DSF. Uh, she left, I think, last year. And uh, but she was she she was very supportive of us uh, when we had our PyCons in uh, in APEC. A general theme that goes around in each of our PyCon APEC conferences is that the conferences are focused for the benefit of the local Pythonistas. We have grown to realize that our PyCon APEC conferences are in fact uh, for the local community of that particular country more than anything else. Uh, when we had our first, uh, when I'm in person PyCons before COVID-19 happened, other than Singapore, out of the country attendees we had, do not make more than 20% of all attendees. So this is the constant pattern that we have seen from all uh, the PyCon APEC, except for Singapore. The local community from the city that hosts PyCon APEC will be the strongest supporters of the conference in their city. With that in mind, other than making PyCons affordable and accessible, I propose a name for the third ingredient for our PyCon APEC in this region, uh, which is making it our own. So these are some of the pictures we I'm supposed to show you in the slides. Uh, we have the Taipei, and this is a 2017 conference in Kuala Lumpur. Making it our own. Um, so these are the initiatives carried out by the various local communities which started bringing or was initiated to our local PyCons. These initiatives aims to lower the barrier of opportunities that these communities think they have. I would like to introduce to you some of these initiatives. Uh, this, this is just scratching the surface. Uh, there are more which they have um, uh, initiated on their own, but due to the time limitations that we have today, so I can only pick up uh, the ones which I think have made one of the big, bigger impacts. So, in nearly every PyCon APEC, um, I'm sorry, let me, okay, all right. So uh, in nearly every PyCon APEC, there was at least one track that focuses on local language. So this is the initiative which we call the longer like local language tracks. Uh, being an international conference, we do acknowledge the need for our international attendees to be able to enjoy the contents uh, so a majority of the tracks are in English. But the fact is that none of our communities in East and Southeast Asia have English as their first language. And that poses a level for the local community. We, we don't deny or try to change the fact that English is a de facto language within our industry. Having said that, giving a talk in a language that you're not proficient in is a ter terrifying thing and poses a very high hurdle to overcome. So this is something which might not be apparent to people like myself or those of you who by chance had the opportunity to learn and be proficient in English from a young age. And because of that, we tend to overlook and take this for granted. We cannot call ourselves inclusive if we do not have opportunities to come for community members to speak just because of their lack of command in English. So we have at least one local language track for members of our community who are more comfortable communicating with their local language. Young Inspirers. Uh, this is something which PyCon Taiwan uh, is uh, have a, a unique program uh, that they organize, uh, including the PyCon APEC this year, if you've noticed. So it promotes inclusion across age groups. A program called Young Inspirers 
uh, that allows students to showcase and share their experience using Python in their projects. The students get to mingle around, learn from experiences, and uh, learn from the experience of others, and also in return also inspires those around them. Python Bootcamp and Pilates Caravan. So the differences in opportunities available to you if you are in a central city like Tokyo, if you are in Japan, for example, and other prefectures can be can be big. And I'm I th I'm sure this is not exclusive only to to uh, you know, Tokyo, Japan, but the countries have, as well. So whether you're in a big city or if you're in a smaller city out in the uh, uh, in a different prefecture, different state, for example. So PyCon JP using the money that they have raised from organizing PyCons, sponsored teaching staff and mentors to travel to different cities in Japan to carry out what we call Python Bootcamp and Pilot Discarabin. Uh, one day begin a Python Bootcamp or events for the communities there. Uh, this allows the PyCon JP team, which are mostly based in Tokyo, to share their knowledge and also opening up chances for communities in other prefectures to get involved in community work and leveling themselves up. Charity Talks. Uh, this is a program which was done uh, by the PyCon JP team, answering the call for financial contribution from the PSF following the aftermath of the cancelled PyCon BIS in 2020. So they leverage their strong connections to their sponsors and community and did a one-day talk event uh, with all the proceeds were given to the PSF. So I think the charity talks raised more than uh, $25,000 and have earned the PyCon GP team the 2021 Q4 Community Service Award from the PSF. Tie up with the local groups. Uh, PyCon Mai, after hosting APAC 2017, uh, with new leadership, has been focusing on moving away from focusing Kuala Lumpur. Uh, which is the capital. They, they work to tie up with a local Kinabalu coders community in Kota Kinabalu, in the state of Sabah, east of Malaysia. Too much focus has been done within Kuala Lumpur itself and bringing opportunities and connections to other parts of Malaysia were high on the priority list. So I'm personally happy with this and this is another example of making it our own. I'm definitely missing stuff here, but if you're listening in and you know that your community in connection with PyCon has done work to address issues, that your community deem as important and as such making it your own, please contact me and I would like to add your work to the list of examples. Um, if you're interested to go through again the examples that were given uh, uh, in the past five minutes, you can again uh, go through the text which I've uploaded online. I know I'm speaking a bit fast here uh, to catch up with the limited amount of time that I have. Anyway, so moving on, uh, let's talk about um, the PSF elections, which I've been also part of uh, the past few years. So after all these years, since uh, first PyCon APEC 2010, the community has grown by leaps and bounds with many, many, many people involved in so many ways uh, to make the communities within APEC a thriving, growing and inclusive one. APEC by default is diverse, so I left that one on purpose. On the other hand, it is pretty clear to me that there is this disconnect between the good things that we're doing in our region with the rest of the bigger world. So specifically, I'm, I'm talking about the Python Software Foundation or the PSF. And here's the PSF mission statement. So if you read through PSF's website, the PSF mandate says follows. The mission of the Python Software Foundation is to promote, protect, and advance the Python programming language and to support and facilitate growth of a diverse and international community of Python programmers. While uh, we can expect that the PSF has policies formal or the otherwise, giving priority to the needs and wants of the community in the US, by the, by the virtue that the PSF is a United States based nonprofit organization, with Python being used by 10 million people all over the planet, uh, the, the data is pretty glaring that the PSF is lacking in a part of its mandate to grow a diverse and international community. So let me give you some uh, specific examples. Uh, number one, the number of core developers that we have are mostly United States and European based. Out of the 170 or so people on the list, which have access, uh, I think, uh, with access to, to GitHub, I think we all might only have one person from APEC region. The PSF has a membership called PSF Fellows. So this is a special type of membership which can only be achieved by nomination. 
So someone nominates you to become a member of the PSF, become a fellow of the PSF. And the PSF fellows are, in, in a nutshell, like examples of what we should aspire to be in the Python community. Out of the 384 members which were appointed as a PSF fellow, member worldwide, only five are from our community within the uh, APEC region. The PSF also has awards to recognize the work done by members of its community. One of them is the PSF Community Service Award, which are considered by nomination, similar to the PSF fellow membership. Since March 2008, there was only two instances of members of our community being awarded the PSF Community Service Award. Finally, as a proxy to show representation and leadership within the Python community itself, uh, out of the 13 board, but board director members, which we have in the Python Software Foundation, only two of them are non-US or European based, while there are none from our community over here. So without different people from different backgrounds and knowledge about globally, about the globally diverse community that we have within the leadership of PSF, it is difficult to say that the PSF represents all of us within the community. Due to this disconnect that I see every year since 2020, I've stood up to run for a seat on the PSF Board of Directors. Unfortunately, I failed to, be, to get elected, and up until 2021, I was the only person from our APEC region to run for the elections. So I'm, I'm happy to report, though, that for the recently concluded 2020 PSF Board elections, two of our compatriots from the APEC region, uh, Kwang Han, uh, South Korea, and Georgie, who was a chairperson for PyCon APEC 2021 Bangkok, uh, also ran with me. Unfortunately, none of us were elected either. So there have been many comments, thoughts, and discussions about election reform, which stem from these election results. So these discussions are not only originating from our region, but from many other parts of the world, which are underrepresented within the leadership of the PSF. So I, I will not comment or summarize them in my unit today other than saying that nearly all of them mean well and try to find a solution to balance our leadership in the PSF to better represent the global community that we are. So I invite you to go through them if you are interested in this topic. After my experience these past years, I believe though that we cannot wait or expect the PSF to move to increase inclusion and diversity for us in this region. We need to take an active part and move towards it ourselves. To be brutally honest, I believe it is beyond the PSF to do this not from any deliberate decision or design, but it is just beyond their means in terms of resources, knowledge, and perhaps will. They have too much stuff on the plate. And now comes uh, the part in my talk, which I hope to add value to all of you who are listening in today. This is where I add my own personal perspectives and lessons uh, learned, which I hope to share with you. I hope to make this part most beneficial to the current or would-be organizers and volunteers of the future. If values are central to diversity and inclusion. Uh, this is a picture of Jessica McKellar uh, giving her keynote during PyCon Apex 2017 in Kuala Lumpur. Uh, she mentioned basically the same thing of ingredients that we have for our PyCons in this region. The East Asia, Southeast Asia, South Asia, and to the extent into the Oceania region is arguably the most diverse region on Earth. For the current members that have hosted PyCon APAC, none of our countries have English as native first language. By default, the moment your community decides to participate in PyCon APAC, we already know your different in background, language, and culture. So we do not add diversity as an afterthought when we realized we needed it. It was something already there and is built in. We never assume that other communities do things or like us. But being different is not the problem. It is, in fact, our strength. But it is also not without problems. How do we get cohesion so that we get everyone to work together? It's through common values that we believe will benefit the community as a whole. Asians have similar values which we mutually understand and respect, and we express these values through what the community can do as they rally around the programming language. So I've mentioned three ingredients that we have for our PyCons uh, in the first half of my talk, but let's get straight through them again. Uh, make it affordable, uh, make it accessible, and making it our own. 
the first two were the original ideas, which was envisioned by Ben Kiat when he started the first PyCon in Singapore in 2010, and I believe still holds true today. The third one is a result of the organization to the committee evolved over the years. Every committee tries to promote issues which are deemed important to them. Our PyCons are in essence built for the local community and presenting the world to them and not the other way around. I believe this is what glues us together. In spite of our diversity, we focus on the values that we want to promote because we believe that they are important to our community, such as openness and access to opportunities. This inclusivity within diversity is what I hope other communities in other parts of this world of us can learn from us. Let me move on to something uh, slightly personal. So uh, this is uh, the Japanese kanji. They, they, they are read um and, and kan. Uh, perhaps you will have different pronunciation if you are in Taiwan or in China, uh, or even in, in Korea, maybe. So during an interview by Python Philippines uh, for an episode of the Work From Home Python Vista program, I was asked a question on how and why I stayed motivated and worked with the community for all this time. Uh, this might be a question that some of you might be asking yourself if you've been spending some years writing open source code or organizing meetups and conferences. After that, I sat down and actually spent some time to try to crystallize my thoughts. I couldn't really answer it when they asked it, but to be honest, I've never spent serious thought on, on an answer to that question. So perhaps it will be a good opportunity to think about it. Anyway, I would like to quote the silver medalist for curling uh, in the 2022 Winter Olympics, uh, Yoshida Chinami. So Yoshida Sang, uh, when asked during an interview about her journey as a sports person, this is what she said. Like in typical Japanese, there are nuances within this expression, which I can't fully unpack for you, but it basically translates to what I live by chances, by chance, relationships, and gut feeling. So when, when I first read about this quote, I just realized that basically that wraps up, wraps up my reason why I'm here doing what I do and my journey as a, as a volunteer. And by chance, I was introduced to Python. My gut feeling brought me to follow this path, you know, joining the community, learning, talking to people, understanding making friends, and the relationships that the community has graciously offered me made me stay. The experiences working with the community has tremendously shaped my views on how and why we need to be present and actively participate within the community with ideas, effort, and money. It also has shown me how the rest of us are lacking opportunities that some of us have, and some, some of us, the others have, Opening those opportunities to more people has and still is a constant personal mission that I have. After all, we are living off the goodwill which the people before us have left us with and placing that goodwill is the least that we can do. Perhaps when the day comes that I lose sight of any of these three, that will perhaps be the day for me to leave and do other things. So if you are currently a volunteer, if you are doing something open source or managing a, a PyCon or running meetups, Perhaps this will resonate with you. Maybe you'll have your own, your N, and your count. This keynote will not be complete if I do not offer my version of the hopes that I have for our future and what we need more within our community. So going further, uh, we have gone fast. And the next thing that we need to go is, is further. Someone wise in the past did say that if you want to go far, you go together. Uh, if, if, if you heard of this, but I'm, I'm sure some of you have heard of it before. Um, a lot of times they quote uh, an African proverb, I think, but um, we are really not sure actually where it came from. So if you want to go fast, you go alone. If you want to go far, you go uh, together. So going together, we must. This means getting as much people involved with the community. This also means making space for them. This is a Malay proverb. Uh, it's pronounced patah tumbuh, hilang berganti. This is a Malay proverb our friends in Malaysia and Indonesia will probably know very well. It literally means the broken will grow, the lost will be replaced. Stepping aside for our new members to come in and find their place is an important topic, but sometimes that we seldom talk about. 
how do we move away from the current community leaders and make way for new people to participate, contribute and feel welcome and needed? For some reason, the notion of living seems to have negative connotations tied to it. Naomi Sida, uh, which was the chairperson of the PSF, uh, I quote her, you are not a leader until you have a succession plan. We need to embrace change. We do this by making our doors open as wide and as welcoming as possible to accept new members in, while also allowing people to leave. Of course, this represents challenges like trying to keep knowledge institutionalized. Paraphrasing uh, Shimizukawa san which is a good friend of mine in uh, the PyCon JP uh, Foundation, we organized uh, PyCons together in the past. During his keynote uh, for PyCon Kyushu in 2022 in Kumamoto uh, early this year, he said something like, a community is like a bus. So you take the bus if you feel it's going in the direction that you want to go, but feel free to get down and take another bus to another direction when you feel differently. Having as much bus stops and buses is what we as the community need to provide. People can get on or get off at different bus stops to go to different directions to where their heart desires, different routes, different sceneries, and different people. Some of the communities within our region have shown that they have been built robust and healthy with new community leaders turning up every year to lead their PyCons, while others have not. I understand each community will have their own challenges to face in order to keep people interested and motivated and wanting to do more. I hope these communities can figure out it out for themselves. Perhaps referring to other communities within our region can give them hints. On a similar vein, we need to be careful not to push the same group of people into thinking that it's them or no one else, because the rest of us take their presence for granted. Voluntary work, uh, similar to contributing open source, tends to push people in this direction, which is unhealthy. If you are contributing and volunteering, you need to realize that although we owe the world many things, burning out because you want to pay those that true community work does no good for anyone. I hope you will always reflect on this and do not take for granted our volunteers and the people working for the community. Please always say thank you to them, be actively involved and always remind them that they can always take a break if they need to. Things will always work out somehow. Kita akan terus patah tumbuh, hilang, berganti. Using the opportunity given to me, for keynote during Park on Attack, I would like to also propose to my fellow community organizers, a Pan-Asian Python Society or APS, similar in concept to what they have in Europe, the Euro Python Society, EPS. The APS will consist of representatives from each member country community which have previously had PyCon APAC. Uh, within the context of organizing and executing a regional Python conference, just like the EPS, the APS will be the main organizer. Furthermore, with a single centralized unit for organizing the regional conference, we can cultivate institutional knowledge and carry on certain fixed practices and aspects of the conference that will be repeated every single year, such as fixed programs like developer outreach and code contests. Having fixed programs with predetermined workflows will help organizers by reducing repetitive loads and creating contents from scratch. We can also consider using a fixed ticketing uh, mechanism, platform, call for proposal platform, which are always required for every conference. Because we know ourselves best, the EPS will be a point of contract, uh, contact for other Asian Python community members to approach to submit nominations for the PSF Fellows or the PSF Community Service Award. The APS might also help with translations of local languages to English to be presented to the PSF regarding these nominations. Outside of conferences, the APS can be an umbrella society that will promote participation of our Asian Python community within the European and its United States counterparts. Of course, there are many uh, logistics issues, organization, organization, organizational and financial issues, which we need to figure out. Uh, this will require cooperation from all of our member communities, but I'm sure our track record of working together in the past, we can find a way forward together. I think we've had some uh, small early discussions about this a few years back, and perhaps it's time that we visit this again. So on a final note, let us change the world. Is this PyCon? Changing the world with this PyCon. I would like to invite every one of you to join the PSF. 
Join the DPSF as a regular member is a simple process. Just filling as an online form. Uh, so this is a QR code. If you click on this, if you scan this, you'll go to an online form and filling it will make you a regular member. If you are today here uh, listening to a PyCon APAC using Python, then you need to be a PSF member. It's free, it's easy, it only takes you two minutes. If you're already managing a community or maintain an open source Python package and spend more than five hours a month, you are eligible to become a managing and or a contributing member and also eligible to vote in the PSF board elections. Do so and show the world that we're here and that we can. Nominate extraordinary people around you. As I mentioned previously, the PSF have programs that aim to bring forth extraordinary contributors and acknowledge their efforts to empower and further the Python course. I would like to once again introduce you to two of these programs, the PSF Fellow Membership and the PSF Community Service Award. The significance of these two programs is that they work on a nomination basis. Anyone can nominate anyone else. Of course, the PSF verify the nomination and move forward with them based on merits. So not everyone that is nominated will be granted a Fellow Membership or Community Service Award. But having more people acknowledge for their efforts and hard work is never a bad thing. And it will at least change the world for the person, even if by just a little, when we say to them, thank you, you deserve this. Help the PSF out. There are a few ways that you can help the PSF out. Well, one of them is join the PSF work group. The PSF have many different work groups that focuses on specific aspects of the Python ecosystem and community. Examples of the work groups that the PSF currently has are the Trademarks and Diversity and Inclusion work group, which I currently part of. Each of the mandate for the work group is different. For example, the Trademarks work group mandate is to assess uh, trademarks for compliance with the current PSF treatment research policy and advise the PSF board on what action if any to take. While the Diversity and Inclusion work group mandate is to actively further the PSF mission to support and facilitate the growth of diverse and international community of Python programs. There might be work groups which align to your interests and skills. So if you like to learn more and get experience helping out an international nonprofit while making an impact worldwide, help, helping out in one of the work groups might be something worthwhile to do. Organize something for your community. Organize something within your local area. Do a meetup, show and tell, or local Python class for beginners. It doesn't have to be big and it doesn't have to be fancy. It doesn't matter if only five people come as long as you are enjoying it. Uh, more importantly though, remember that you can always stop anytime if you think you're not getting enough interest and think it's not worth your enjoyment anymore. No right-minded person will think the lesser of you. At the very least, organizing your own community will give you insights on the pulse of what is needed and also connect you to the people that care, which will, I assure you, an experience that you will treasure. Finally, um, which is a must, is you can organize a PyCon. It doesn't have to be the regional PyCon APAC or even the country PyCon, like PyCon HK or PyCon ED. You want to organize a PyCon, the only requirement is that it's a public event. It can be a free event or anyone can purchase a ticket and attend. And that there are no operative elements such as relatively expensive ticket pricing or gender limits. You can even have a so-called mini PyCon, maybe one track, one day event, five to six speakers with catering and food, getting people together, sharing knowledge and ideas and having fun while doing it. This is how the, our PyCon in uh, Japan and Malaysia started. We had our own mini PyCons. I remember when I founded PyCon Mai in 2014, I was in Japan and swimming. Uh, my co-founder and also co-organizer is a longtime friend who has his feet on the ground in Kuala Lumpur. So I asked him what he thinks if we started PyCon Mai based on our experience in PyCon JP. I, rem I still remember he said to me, no one will come. Well, I responded by saying, well, if only 10 people come, that's good enough. You don't have to do another one, but let's just do one and see what happens. Well, long, to long story short, we successfully had daily PyCon from 2014 and hosted PyCon Impact 2017, and they also had it in 2020. It will, will have been a blast. Uh, unfortunately, the pandemic came. Hopefully, we can see another PyCon Impact in uh, Malaysia, Kuala Lumpur, somewhere else. 
But so we did we did that in 2017 before we passed the leadership to a new set of people. Uh, me and swimming, we left. Then uh, PyCon Mai, and now we're still having it yearly PyCon. Uh, if I may have a plug here, they are going to have their PyCon Mai retreat in Kota Kinabalu uh, next week. Uh, no, the next two weeks, I think. Uh, look for it, Kota Kinabalu PyCon Mai retreat. It's going to be a new style of PyCon, which will be very interesting. So if you're if you thinking about organizing PyCon, so I invite you to join us in the PyCon APEC organizers mailing list. Uh, again, uh, you can click on the link on the text which you have put online um, after this keynote, and please join us on the mailing list if you're interested in even learning how to organize a PyCon. You'll have an access to a breadth of knowledge on organizing conferences and ask help uh, to source out for sponsors and speakers which we already have done for so many years. So we have a list which will be very helpful um, when you want to organize a PyCon. We'll be happy to have you and very much welcome your thoughts and new ideas on how to further make our group more inclusive and have better experiences for other organizers. This is a QR code uh, that will lead you to our mailing list for APEC organizers. With that, um, I'm running out of time. So with that, I would like to thank you. Uh, last but not least, I'd like to be explicit and say thank you to all this group and people and the persons that have uh, made all of this possible, PyCons, and also have made my journey as a volunteer community. And also, I'm pretty sure the journey of the many people that is participating, um, organizing PyCons, and also the communities within APEC. Uh, very much, well, very fulfilling. Um, PyCon Taiwan, PyCon TW for hosting the conference this year. Thank you. PyCon SG for having the first conference in 2010. PyCon JP uh, for getting together and having uh, PyCon in the first PyCon in 2013. PyCon KR, PyCon TH, PyCon MY, PyCon ID, PyCon HK, PyCon TH and many, many PyCon sponsors in our region that helped make it possible. The PSF, obviously, Steve Holden, uh, who inspired Ben Kiap to start PyCon APEC in 2010. All of you, the attendees, uh, without you, this will not be possible. All of the staff for PyCon APEC uh, 2022. And last but not least, uh, our own Ben Kiap for his vision to start off uh, PyCon APEC in 2010. And with that, I would like to say thank you for uh, inviting me and hearing my talk. Uh, this is my Twitter. Please feel free to connect me and also my LinkedIn is there. Thank you very much. Thank you, Iqbal, for your talk. And now we will head on to the Q&A session. So, Iqbal, let me ask some questions from the Slido. So the first one is, what is your motivation for dedicating so much to these communities? Iqbal, are you there? Okay, please wait for a minute on the technical problems. Hi, Iqbal. Can you hear me now? Yes, I can. Okay, now we are going to head on to our Q&A session and I will read some questions from the Slido. So the first one is, what is your motivation for dedicating so much to these communities? Uh, that is a very important question, and it's actually a very difficult one. Uh, it's very personal. Uh, I do not think that any one person, each of our volunteers, will have their own, um, her or his own different interpretation and answers to this. But for me, uh, as I mentioned during my keynote, it's um, giving opportunities back. So the opportunities that was 
pass on to me. Um, I feel that the least that I can do is to pass them on forward for someone else uh, to a point where I can do as much as possible and make this world that we live in a better place than when I came in, when, when I leave the rather than when I came in. So in, in a nutshell, it's just, it's just that. That's my motivation. Okay. And the next question is that, can you share some stories about traveling or food when you attend PyCon in other countries? Ah, well, um, PyCon APEC especially is, I've traveled to different regions of the world. So the, the recent, most recent one was PyCon EuroPython. Uh, that was in Dublin. Um, I've obviously been to many PyCons in, in Asia, uh, in the APEC region. I've also been to the PyCon US uh, once. And not any specific stories, but being an Asian, Asian PyCons have the best food. So that's what I can say uh, for sure. Uh, the PyCon uh, Python the uh, Euro Python had delicious food, but were not as spicy as uh, what we have here in Asia. So, if you are interested in food and if you want to enjoy it, and this is actually a very important part in having conferences, I, I do believe this. Um, going through all the different PyCons in APEC would be something that I will believe you would like and enjoy. And within our own culture, and I believe this is very, very true for all us Asians, we born over food. As opposed to, uh, for example, I, I think over in Dublin, they born over beer, for example, right? So they go to pubs. But for us, we born over food. So there are so many different types of things that we can eat in the conference, outside of the conference. So if you were, if you get invited to join one of the breakout groups, like after conferences, you know, let's go to this shop or this, uh, this, uh, this, this yatai or uh, this garai, uh, you know, um, please enjoy that, um, take that opportunity and enjoy the company and enjoy the food. Okay, thank you. So we can say that Asian food rocks. <laughs> Yes, yes, <laughs> okay, we the, can see that. Yeah, so the next question is, uh, what is the most challenging part of starting and maintaining a new community? There are many challenging parts in starting and maintaining a new community. So I, I can't list them up all of you. All of them are, 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 are challenging, so it's different to put like, you know. Uh, how which one is most challenging? But I, I think uh, one which doesn't get enough uh, thought of is actually when do you when do you call it quits or when do you think this is enough? If you are not able to actually continue, you know. Uh, getting traction for a community, as they say. So this is something which is, I think, one of the difficult ones because we, we don't try to think about it. We want our community to succeed, but believe me, most of the time, it doesn't because it's difficult. You need many different types of skill set to actually talk to people, to get people together, uh, to convince people, to become your speakers, to convince people to come, to convince sponsors to help you with uh, the financial part of, of your communities, those kinds of things. So uh, I think that's, that's the difficult, perhaps the most difficult part because we don't talk about it often. I hope I'm, I hope I'm answering the question. Okay, thank you. And the next question is, what is your motivation for contributing to broader communities like PyCon APEC or PSF instead of just local communities? Mm. 
Oh, that, that's a great question. Um, um, okay, okay. Yeah. I, so this is perhaps because we have enough people uh, in the local communities which are participating in. Uh, like I mentioned in the keynote, we need to need, we need to make space for people. Um, and I believe that in the communities that I'm participated in, we have I need to move away to make space for new people to come in. And this is how we, like I said, tumbo hilang berganti. So now, uh, what do you do next then? And having thought about that, I noticed the disconnect between what we have in this region. We need to work together regardless of where we are in this world because we are, we are basically heading in the same direction with this community which is using this programming language. And I've noticed that the disconnect, there's, there's no one to actually make the disconnect closer on the international level, so you see, right? So perhaps what I've learned, the experiences that I've had, the connections that I've made, the trust that was given to me, I think this is something which would be beneficial for the region, for example, internationally. Our relationship with the PSF, with EuroPython, for example. And that is the motivation why I've, why I've moved towards this direction in the past few, few years. Okay, thank you for your answer. And the last question from Slido is that Nikki asks, she thinks that many volunteers would like APS idea because fixed ticketing and CFP platform will make it easier to hold PyCon. How can we do to realize APS idea? Mm -hmm. Yes, um, I don't have an answer to that yet because it's not up to me alone. Of course, so we need to talk about this. Uh, there are a lot of, first, there's the legal issues, like uh, it has to be sort, some sort of like a organization and there must be oversight by all the people involved. So how do we, what kind of legal structure do we have? And those, those kind of things. Um, I do not think that we can do much within this year because we are already in September, but hopefully uh, when we do get to meet for a real face-to-face uh, -face icon in the near future, hopefully next year, I hope to have something more concrete, at least uh, like a, a like a execution plan. So this is what we need with all the members that wants to get involved with this. So this is, I, I guess, the most uh, uh, pra practical or um, realistic thing that I can give. I can say now. Okay, so maybe. We can look forward to the near future. Yeah. So yes. that is the question for today now. And thank you, Iqbal, for today's talk. Uh, thank you, Paikia. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you for today's amazing talk. And uh, the keynote session is the end now. Thank you, Shelley. Thank you, Iqbal.